Well, thank you for your purchase of an EasyWatch Evolution video security system. This how-to video is going to help you set up remote viewing. That's the ability to view your cameras live from anywhere you've got an internet connection. So to make sure we're watching this, the right video, I want you to take a look at the screen here and make sure that you're looking at your EasyWatch Evolution screen. If you're looking at something that looks pretty different from this, you might not be at the same video. So the first thing we're going to do is find out the IP address of our DVR. And to do that, you're going to see me go to the command prompt. So I started at Windows and then I did a search here. This is Windows 8. So you'll notice if you're using Windows 7 that it looks a little bit different. With Windows 7 what you're going to want to do is go to that Windows menu, press start, and then go to run and type CMD. From here we're going to type in IP config. And that's going to bring up some information that's important to us. So in this case, the router address that we need is 10.1.1.1. This is the default gateway. We're going to want to write that down. The next number that's important to us is the IP address of our particular DVR, 10.1.1.109. Now, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we access our router at this address and open up three ports for this particular IP address. And once we've done that, it's going to be smooth sailing. So let's get started. The first thing is to open up Internet Explorer and visit that default gateway address. So in this case, 10.1.1.1 is the default gateway. And my login screen looks a little bit like this. I'm being asked for a username and a password. Your screen is going to be different. Uh, depending on the type of router that you have, the instructions are going to vary. So how do you find the instructions that make the most sense for you? Let's go to portforward.com. That's P-O-R-T-F-O-R-W-A-R-D.com. From there, take a scroll down to the bottom here in the footer. We're going to click on routers. Now you're going to see all the different brands of routers that you might have. So a very popular one, for example, is the Linksys router. I clicked on L. I go to Linksys right here. They present an advertisement. Once you click out of that, you're going to see all the different brands uh, or models, I should say, of the Linksys router. Uh, this is a pretty popular one. So let's get started with the WRT54GS from Linksys. I'm now going to click on the default guide. Now what this really does is show me step by step everything I need to do on a Linksys router to gain access and open up the ports that are going to allow me to have remote viewing. So you'll notice again you're going to type into your browser bar the address of the router and as a reminder that was this default gateway that we found. And you probably asked for a username and password like I was on mine. And for the, this particular brand of Linksys, it says for the username, you leave that space blank. And for the password, you type in admin. Now, these are the default settings. If something's been changed, or for example, if you have a uh, commercial system or an IT administrator at your business, uh, this might not be the, the right thing. You, you, you may have to talk to your IT administrator about opening up the ports. But if you're here to do it yourself, let's keep going. So you've logged on, you're going to see a screen that looks something like this. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do in this case is it says click security. Uh, once you've clicked security, you're going to have a few other things. You're going to remove all the check marks that say block anonymous internet requests. You're going to save the settings. You're going to go to applications and gaming. That's this next page. And here at this next page, and again, depending on your router, it's going to look a little bit different. It's asking for an application, the start and end range of your port, whether or not it's uh, a, a UDP or a TCP protocol, or the address, and whether it's enabled. Now all these settings are going to be a little bit different, but very similar among all the different routers. If we were setting up a Linksys in here, in, under application, I'd write something like EasyWatch or something that is generally going to help you remember why you're doing this, opening up your ports for remote viewing. So I would write EasyWatch 1, let's say, under this application. 
And the first port I'm going to open up is 5150. And so I would put that in both the start and the end range. I would leave this as both. And the IP address, I would make sure matches the IP address of my DVR, in this case 10.1.1.109. I would click Enable. And I would do that now for this next port, which was port 5160. So in this first thing, I might write, write Easy Watch 2. This would be 5160 to 5160, keeping this at both. That same IP address as above, which again is for this machine, 10.1.1.109, and it's listed under IPv4 address. And I'd click Enable. And then the last one's port 80. So this one, Easy Watch 3, port 80, port 80, both that same IP address and hit enable and then I'd save the settings. After you save it, the router might reset, it might take a couple minutes, but you've done everything, you've done the hard work from here. The next part we're going to work on is back in the EasyWatch Evolution software. You come over to this little hammer, it's the settings, I'm clicking on the hammer, I go up to setting and I choose system setting. There are a couple things that I want you to have checked every time. Live streaming and remote playback. These are the things that are going to start up every time the system launches. Even if your computer was reset because of a power surge, it's going to automatically start running these services once the software is run. And that's an important thing. The next thing we want to do is come into network service. Now remember, we opened up a couple ports. One was the live streaming port, so we want to click start for the live streaming port, and you remember it was 5150. Now we're going to go to remote playback. We're going to start the service for that too. Again, 5160 is the service there. Selecting OK. Now, the next thing is to uh, set up the application. It could be as simple as running a, uh, a web client, or it could be on your phone, or it could be uh, with another version of this desktop software. You'll see in our next video how to set up your client device for remote viewing.